I'd Not like to unsubscribe from this relationship. We got a stage five clinger. Time to fucking bounce, boys. Are you done? No. Hey, oh, hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Brotherhood Without Man. It's your favorite full spoiler review podcast of George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series. That was Nate moving the mic. <laughs> yeah, now you can't edit that out. Oh well. Oh well. I'm Nate. Joining me, as always, is my brother, Zach, who just did the intro. Yep. And we read A Song of Ice and Fire here. He's real cunty tonight, folks, just so you're aware. (sighs) If you've never listened before, Nate is a cunt, and we are full spoiler, and we will ruin everything for you. So, read the books first, because we like to talk about it all congruently. Fuck. uh, I'm the cunty one. You're yelling at the mic. I'm just Why are you yelling at the mic? Why are you yelling at the mic? (laughs) Anyway... If you joined us last episode, we were reading Theon. Ew. Fuck Theon. Were we? Yes. Yeah. Fuck Theon. We got to meet Asha, which Asha. was pretty awesome. She's dope. And She's better than Theon in every way, shape, or form. Yeah. So she duped him heavily. He started out looking at his long ship, his newly made boat, and she pretended she wasn't herself. He was a creepy perv. And got all gross and fucking princely. And then he was shown the truth. Which was fucking wonderful. Anytime Theon gets fucking owned is a good time. We then saw them at the feast where she makes a bigger fool of him in front of everybody, not just the guy at the gate. And finally we see Balon Greyjoy's plan. Yeah, Balon's sending Theon's dumb ass to Harry the Stony Shore, which is a shit job, while Asha goes and takes Deepwood Ma. Fuck it all. Right. And yeah, then he, he plans on pinning Rob between... The Neck and the Lannisters so that Rob's fucked and can't retake Winterfell. And Theon's a little bitch. Yeah, he's not happy about it. <clears throat> then this uh, chat episode, though, we are jumping chat. to King's Landing. Chat episode. We're reading Tyrion 6. Yeah. So in Tyrion 5. What happened? Tyrion went to the guild of the Pyromancers and saw... The wildfire in, the, in their clay little pots that are designed to explode and do sweet shit the pyromancers dunce helene and Tyrion notes just sort of the wastefulness of all the wildfire and the potential nuke they have on their hands in ten thousand jars of the stuff but he also orders some clay pots given to jason bywater so that the men can begin practicing train 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 and carry him uh he gets some missives from braun he goes and meets with iron hand and uh, Iron Hand tells him Cleos Frey came back, and he listens to Rob's terms. And Iron and, uh, Hand being Jason Bywater, yeah. for those who may not be aware. And Tyrion gives him the instructions with green paint to begin drilling at that, and then he goes and visits Talks to Cersei. Cleos Frey. Yeah, Cleos. He gets the information, the peace uh, offering from Rob Stark, which then he delivers to Cersei Lannister. Yeah, she's not happy. Which she's even less happy about that than she is about Marcella being married off to Tristane uh, Martell. But she gets over it because of the peace offering. Yep. This chapter we open, which is Tyrion 6, on Tyrion making his way to that very room. Yeah, he hears... No, I, I lied. That's fucking wrong. What very He room? went to Tyrion... She last was one, in she his was solar, in his yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, he is approaching the Queen's Chambers, yes. and he hears just the loveliest singing. Oh, it's beautiful. And Marin Trant, who has guard duty, begrudgingly lets him in. My lord. And Cersei's straight lounging. Yeah, she's like, chilling hair as down. Fuck. Like, there's some no grapes sandals. being just fed to her. Like, it's ridiculous. And... Before them is Sir Lancel Lannister, just lovely as can be. He's your favorite character. I heart, no, I fucking hate He immediately cuts soul. off his song, and Tyrion notes, because he asked Tyrion, like, were you summoned here? And Tyrion notes that he had all the certainty of youth, wed to the arrogance that came so naturally to those born blonde and strong and handsome. And his he's... recent elevation only making him worse. Which, one, I mean, not... So not to get too political, but like there's some real wor- world insinuations there that I really like with the being born, you know, handsome and privileged and strong and blonde. And so I really think that that's a succinct fucking 
yeah. little bit from Martin there. And but... then he also, you know, does mention that, like, Lancel's grown a lot since he fucking fed the wine to Robert Baratheon to gored, get gored by the boar. Like, Gross. he's a he's much bigger and more Cersei attracting. But Cersei regards him suspiciously and thinks that he's here about the begging brothers, the preachers who've been screaming outside that she's had imprisoned. Yeah. And cuz she was done with their shit cuz one had even claimed the gods were punishing us because Jamie killed the rightful king and I will not have it. So she had them all imprisoned in Tyrion. Yeah. We talked about some of the beggars cuz uh in Tyrion's last chapter he had seen one in the street and Hell stopped yeah, he did. But yeah, he uh, actually tells her like, "Oh, yeah, no, 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 I don't, I don't really give a fuck about that. And then thinks to himself, like, he's actually pretty fucking irked when she did it. And because he had already, him and Varys, maybe Littlefinger was there as well, already explained to her that if you put them in prison for that shit, it's just going to fuel, fan the flames. Like, the, the people are going to be like, oh, well... If they're being imprisoned, it's because they're saying something that shouldn't be heard. Yeah, but he didn't think it was worth going to battle with Cersei over, so he kind of just let it slide by. But that's not why he's here, and he tells her, we need to speak in private. And so, Privily. Uh, she, Cersei gets up and goes and gives Lancel a kiss on the cheek and says, Don't worry, sweet cousin, my brother is harmless when he's alone. And Lancel just kind of grills him as he leaves, and then... They're, they're cleared out, and Cersei's just like, oh, you're very pleased with yourself, aren't you? Well, why shouldn't I be? I love his, like, he's so fucking confident well, right he now. Well, he, he just asks her, like, why not? Why shouldn't I be? And thinks every day, every night, the hammers pounded and the chain grew longer. Like, he's got this secret kind of ace in the hole. Like, the only way Stannis can attack is by taking Blackwater Bay. If we close off back Blackwater Bay, then fuck Stannis. So, like, fuck Stannis. and that is, that's going well, and no one knows about it, and no one can intercede in that right now because no one's, no one cares enough right. to look outside their own bullshit to look at this chain that's being built. And so it is his sort of like, yeah, fuck yeah, every, I'm pleased as hell with myself. But he notes with surprise that, she has kept the bed that Robert used to sleep in. Yeah. And she notes that it gives me sweet dreams, which is just savage, savage, Cersei, you fucking crazy bitch. Yeah, yeah. And he tells her, he gives her the good news. Well, Stannis has sailed from Dragonstone. She's gathered. She loses her, her shit. Yeah, dude. She's like, call 911. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, she's like, why hasn't Tywin been notified? Why haven't we gotten the city guard gone? Like, what are you, she's why are you laughing? Shaking why him. the fuck are you yeah, laughing? Tyrion's, and he's dying. Yeah. He thinks he's the cleverest motherfucker. He can barely right get it out that he's sailed to Storm's End to take siege against Renly. And Cersei begins to chuckle. She's like, wait, how, how, Hold up. He's They're fighting each other? They they're gonna they're going against each other now? And then she chuckles again saying, I'm starting to think that Robert was the clever one and Tyrion threw back his head and roared with laughter and suddenly they were laughing together and she whirls him around the room and I even hugged him for a moment. Was so uncomfortable all of a sudden when I read this scene. Yeah. It was weird, like cause I as it, it was just the way that the fucking fl- the switch flipped. It was so quick that it was like holy, sh- holy shit. Yeah, Cersei, you you may need some medication. Like, whoo. Yeah, it was. It's almost nice to see the relationship that could have been, but. It's yeah, yeah even it's Tyrion. purely because he's delivering this good news, yeah. and that's sort of what because he thinks this must be what. Jamie sees when uh when he well because uh she uh she starts to recall before because that's when they have the toast uh, oh, she yeah, starts yeah. to recall that Stannis had asked Robert for Storm's End oh, multiple yeah. multiple right. times I put like, that we got it confirmed by Cersei that that was because we discussed it heavily yeah. in Game of Thrones that it, it was, was intended a as a yeah, slight Robert, to because Tyrion's like oh yeah Stannis took it as a slight and she's like it was meant as one Robert fucking intended it to fuck with Stannis and so they're laughing, and he suggests a toast to brotherly love, and she says, "Oh God, yes! Like, let fuck it, please." Well, so because she, they make the, I fucking the way that they he says to brotherly love, mm-hmm. just it, it, I loved it because like she's going to toast and drink, 
a poisoned cup from her brother. Yeah. To brotherly love. Yeah, and it, you know, it's it's as his back is to her filling the cups of wine, it was easy to sprinkle a pinch of fine powder into hers. Harmless when I'm alone, am I? He thinks. And they toast to Stannis yeah. and Renly, and she lights up at the toast, like, because they're just the giggling. And, stuff. and this is when. Yeah, he says, this. she's beautiful. Like, you can see yeah. the beauty with her smiling the way she is. This must be what Jamie sees. And I when, think he's right. Yeah. Absolutely. That when she's with Jamie, she is smiling like this. She yeah. is, her guard is down. She's like the giddy little girl that scooped him off the bed. He so, almost would feel sorry for poisoning. Yeah, her. and it's I like how George alludes to like you. We're rereading it, so we know that it's gonna give her the shits, and she's gonna spend the next few days fucking not leaving her bathroom. But Martin really makes it seem like no, I'm killing. This yeah, bitch he just right killed now. her. Yeah. Like you're done, bitch. Yeah. But it immediately hard cuts to the next morning where he's being delivered the news that that bitch is shit in her brain. <laughs> yeah, so. she, she ain't leaving her privy. And so Tyrion says, he plays, you know, his part. Oh, that's tragic. Send her my regards. Tell her to rest. I'll handle the shit for the day. And so Tyrion notes the, it, we cut ahead into the day where we are now in the, the Red Keep and the Iron Throne. Yeah. And Tyrion just thinks how hideous it looks in the stairs, hurt his legs. But it is high. It and is high. with his guards and his gold cloaks and his fucking everything, he's he's feeling it, man. Oh, he, yeah. He's Bron on the trip. is a little bit below him well, and I Sir mean, Preston a little bit below that. Like At this point, everything's gone the way he's anticipated. And he's planning things out to a heavy degree. Like, even the uh, poisoning Cersei, making sure she's not here to defend and prevent him from sending away her guards. Yeah, yeah. Like, everything is pretty well thought out. And so... He should be feeling himself, but he lets the power get to him. Yeah, the, he notes the, the gallery is filled, and he sees a couple high lords. He notes Sansa looking beautiful as ever today. Yeah, and... so I did want to mention um, Lord Giles was there coughing, and we've talked about him and their cousin Tyrek, who recently married um, Lady Ermisande is her name or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I yeah, how to pronounce Sunday, it. yeah. And she's, uh, if you don't remember, she was at the tourney for Joffrey's name day, the little baby. Yeah. She's the little tiny baby of House Hayford. So I just think it's, I wanted to point out the little small characters and kind of the ones that he highlighted that so are still present. So he just present. married a baby? Yeah. And so they're kind of picking on him, and like all the people are calling him like wet nurse or whatever the yeah, fuck his yeah. name is, because he's still wearing like his marriage stuff that he's supposed to for, I don't know, fucking ceremony or whatever Weird. the fucking purpose is. But yeah, because of they want his name to have the fucking house because she's the last of her line, and so she's the heir to it. Yeah. But they want to you know get a claim. And Tyrion summons Cleos Frey, and his voice rings out, and he likes the sound of that too, and thinks that Shay should see this. She'd be she'd be hot as hell turned on by me sitting up on the Cleos Frey. But Step forward. yeah, he likes the acoustics of the room. Yeah, it, like projects his voice. He just feels big. Yeah, it it, oh absolutely. And so but he you notes know, it's impossible for Shay to ever see him sitting here. So Tyrion has says he's heard their terms and now he offers theirs because Rob's terms are unacceptable. So I would, I wanted to point out George was really sly about it. He says when Sir Cleos comes up he kneels before them. And Tyrion notices he's bald. Yeah. He's never seen the top of Cleos' face. Yeah, yeah. Because he's so little. He's, he's and so, like, he, for the first time, he's actually looking down on these people. Yeah. And so I just thought that was interesting that he, and he mentioned. And he literally is looking down on these people, we'll learn with Thorne. And he tells them their terms. Rob must lay down his sword and swear fealty and return to Winterfell. He must free Jamie and place his host under Jamie's command so he can march against Renly and Stannis. He expects a hostage from each of Rob's bannermen to be treated well, yada, 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 and yes. all that fun stuff. Cle- Cleo's Frey, at this point, says that they'll never do- agree to that, and Tyrion thinks they're not. Ex- we're not expecting yeah, him no to. Yeah, no shit. He says uh, he wants him to tell Rob that they have another host at Casterly Rock, and they will squash Rob between that one and, and Tywin's uh, army and host as well. Stannis and Renly war with each other, and Tristane, son of Doran Martell, will be married to Marcella. Ooh. And the people are like, gosh, murmur, gosh, gosh, murmur. Mm. Get on the Facebook. 
Um, his father's bones he shall have as a gesture of Joffrey's good faith. Because Cleos asks, uh, he mentioned his, his... Well, yeah, because he says that he's going to... They're going to trade Harry and Karstark and Wylas Manderley for Willem Lannister. And then Lord Serwin and Sir Donald Locke for Tyon Frey, who's Cleos's brother there. And then he will also have Ned's bones sent as well. Yeah. Um, Cleos reminds them... Uh, uh, Rob wants ice and his sister's back. Well, and Tyr- ice is here. He ain't getting that. Yeah, Tyrion's basically tells him, well, yeah, he can have them back once he's freed Jamie and he sent all the hostages down and he's retreated up north he, to Winterfell. Tyrion glances at Sansa and actually feels some pity for her and thinks during that that she'll they'll be treated as well as Rob yeah. makes to them and uh, also hoping that no one finds out that fucking Arya is missing still. And so with that, he thinks, now the thrust. Sir Cleos is the queen's own cousin and my own, and should have a Lannister escort, along with the Stark guards. Vela, you will take all of the house guard with you and march with them to River Run. Which, uh... Pycel is immediately fucking livid. He is up, but 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 my, my my lord, not the who will protect the queen regent Cersei Lannister. M- uh, by my lord, the king, by my lord, the king's guard and the city watch can do that. Uh, off you be there, Vila. Finger guns. So at this point, he glances down at. So the, I mean, real quick. Tyrion Vilar is the captain of the Lannister House Guard. Yes. We have learned Tyrion has, as one of his first things getting into the city, was to remind Vilar where his loyalty stood. That he wasn't Cersei's, he was House Lannister. Right. And so now what Tyrion is doing is saying, yeah, Cleos Frey came with a h- escort of Stark men. I'm going to send him and Ned Stark's bones back with... Uh, a contingent with Lannister. a much larger host as well. Yeah, and that's kind of like a, a an ex, almost expected show of Lannister power. Oh, they had to one up us by sending more yeah. guards, a larger. And escort. so at the same time, he's removing Cersei's house guard. These the ones that she's, she's surrounding herself, her. her spies. And uh, we'll we'll it, it gets mentioned more, but just so everyone's clear, who Vilar is. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the council table, um. Varys has a little grin. He's he's loving it. He's L- living it. Little finger is feigning boredom. Uh, cleaning his fingernails. And Pycelle is a fucking fish out of water. <laughs> yeah. But um, a, a herald shouts out if anybody else has business with the king, let it be known now. And Sir Alistair Thorne steps up. Yeah. I'll be heard. It. This is wonderful. So there. I didn't actually. I don't know why note as many of the quotes, but. This is some of the best Tyrion fucking quipping I've ever seen. Yeah, Thorin essentially says he's been trying to get a hold of him for a while. Tyrion's like, oh, Bronn, that's not cool of you. Which, if you remember in Tyrion 4, I think it was, Bronn was like, hey, there's a member of the Night's Watch. And Thorin's not buying it anyway. He's like, you've been fucking avoiding me like a dick. And so they get to... Uh, Thorne actually says that he's only to give his message to the king. Dude, and Tyrion just lays how much it out. Se- how much he yeah. set this um, up. The king is currently playing with his new toys. It was like, shit, man, right in front of everybody and all that. Yeah, um, which uh, essentially Tyrion had acquired a mirror's crossbow, which shot three quarrels at once. Pop, and pop, pop. There was nothing to be done but to try it immediately because that's Joffrey. And so Tyrion did that to get Joffrey out of the fucking castle. To make sure, especially it just like he got Cersei out. Yep. So that's how he got Joffrey away from this and is able to sit the Iron and Throne And so Thorne right relents and tells them of the dead rangers rising in the night and fucking all the hoo-ha. And so I... Damn it. Tyrion, like, he's very torn because he... he he well, he's not sure what it is. Well, that's is it. it. Like, is, did someone put him up to this to just fuck with me and put me in this position? Because this is a if he if he acts afraid, people are gonna mock him for fearing a, stories. Uh, yeah, fearing oh the Snarks and Grumpkins. But, but at the same time, he knows the Night's Watch needs help. He stood on top of that wall and he felt something. He's not sure what. Yeah, we but get so much Jon Snow and Old Bear talk oh, right man, here, yeah. where he remembers specifically standing with Jon Snow and his wolf, looking out at the haunted wood and just feeling something that was 
awe-inspiring, whether it was fear or just beauty, whatever. Right. But at the same time, he also remembers Mormont's words of needing help. And, yeah. And, you know, the Night's Watch needing all the, the assistance he, they can get. But he'd come to like G.R. Mormont. Yeah, absolutely. And just like he came to like Jon Snow. But... To save face, he begins to berate sh- yeah, Thorn in the greatest of ways. And too. shit on Thorn. Just... Which, good. Fuck you, Thorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Have uh, you tried burying your dead? You know, that might work. Maybe like... if you kill them all the way, then they won't be able to come back. And he, he mentions having a token to, as proof. And they're like, oh, wonderful. And he's like, yo, well. The hand rotted to bits. Y- you while waited, I waited too long. Yeah. And so Tyrion essentially says, I'll give you, like, 50 spades so you can actually bury your dead in the pick of the dungeons so you can go through, even though Yorin took most, most of, of the them. most of the, the good men. And he dismisses court. But as he's descending, Alistair waits for him. Yeah, he wasn't having it. And, like, tries to lunge at him like a crazy, like, YouTube video. Yeah, I love that the Kingsguard grabs yeah. him. And just like, uh-uh. And he calls him a fool. And Tyrion's just like, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, Give my regards to G.R. and Jon Snow and Bronn. I like that he, like, because he, he was like, give my regards to the old bear. Oh, and you know what? Jon Snow, too. Which like, I think he does as the dig, which is like, I know you don't like yeah. this bastard, but he carries more weight in this court with me Absolutely. than you do. If Jon Snow had come, I'd actually listen. Right, but, definitely. Yeah, and I, I just like that last little dig he gives. And then Bronn grabs Alistair and marches him to fuck out. Yeah, like so... a Mari Povich episode, bitch. <laughs> and so... <laughs> With the conclusion of this court, yes. we are I going sell. to oh, right. we're, we're gonna mm-hmm. jump to ours real quick before the nitty gritty. Yeah, of before the... I start talking about Pycelle disappearing. And so, real quick, we're gonna convene our small council. We'll let you get back to the episode. Woo woo. What up, small counselors? Slipping into the small council. Ew, don't say slipping. Slipping. Into... Why is slipping such a growth? Like, I don't know. You slip your feet into your shoes, right? No. You slip your feet into slippers? No. You slip them into sandals? I put my sandals on. I you put never my slippers slip on. into the bathtub? No. You no. You never slip into a bathroom. I don't ever want to slip in the bathroom anything. Slip into your sweatshirt? No. No slipping? No slipping. The you only thing I want to be... That, I was going to say, the only thing I want to be slipping down is a slide. Oh, That's that it. Great. All right. So we'll siddle into the small council. We'll siddle? Yeah. Oh, my S-I-D-L-E, God. S-I-D-L-E, yeah. siddle, siddle. Oh, siddle. Jesus We're Christ. We're going to siddle in. Stop. All right, we're at the small Sidle? council. Sidle? Like, sidle? Yeah, I, I change Siddle. words. Sigil, They're just words. sigil. You know. Anyway. Uh, this is our small council where we tell you how you can contact us to dumb fox. <laughs> um, we do have an inductee to read later on. We also, oh, we got a fucking email. Oh, a dope ass email dope from our email. friend who, it's been a little while, it's but been he's been busy. It's been a while since we heard from Sid. Sid's not going to hear this for a while because he's way back on like episode 58 Yo, or some shit. it's like shit. a time capsule. Yeah, it's crazy. It's but just he emailed waiting us just to say, hey brothers, long time. <laughs> I'm halfway through season one, episode 58, Cat 9, A Roll of the Dice. Enjoy. It's a good one, I think. Uh, I have to say, I really enjoy the impressions that you guys do. Shouldn't have said that. Oh, man. Especially the I am not pleased, Ned. I am not pleased, Ned. Or its variations. That has me rolling. Uh, look forward to what else you guys make up in future episodes. I, I think you may eat those words. <laughs> also laughed out loud at Valor de Harius, are you Aquarius? What the fuck was that? That shit was hilarious and random. Loving it. Thank you, Sid. Thanks, Sid. It's so, always good to hear from you, buddy. And I have to say that it's one of our favorite parts is coming up with new voices to fuck around with as these it's characters. It's mainly to, I mean, now it's to fuck with the audience. But it's more we to have an audience, But it's always been to fuck, well, I mean, fuck it's always, with each it's other. fuck with each other. Yeah, yeah, try to make each other laugh out loud. So now that we have people who listen, it's it's that much worse. Don't mm, encourage this. Mm, but uh, thank if you, you so much. want to write us in an email, Sid did it through his email. That's where Julian Sid writes did in. Do it through uh, his email. Yeah. Yeah. So our email that he wrote to us on, you fucking cunt, leave me alone, is without manners brotherhood at gmail dot com. Don't leave us alone. That was to We're Zach. We're in a safe space. We're in a safe space. That's for you, apparently. Well, it is my house, so. Anyway, <laughs> you can also, if you want to talk to Not us, when I'm here. To, will you stop interrupting? I'm trying to tell them how to oh. reach us. Reach me, because you don't do anything on these social Whoa! medias. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash brotherhood podcast, where there's also a private, super secret 
Facebook. Fuck you. Oh, because I did the hands around yes. the... Yes. Okay. There's, uh, that makes sense. There's a private Facebook group of which you can gain access to through our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Without Manners. We can be reached on Twitter. I'm fairly active over there, at Manners Without. Zach's on Twitter. At Carstark92, I do puppy pictures of yeah. my... Barrack Husky Boy. Barrack Dog Darian. Barrack Dog Darian, a little pain in the butt. And we can also be reached on Instagram, at Manners Without. But what's most important right now Whoa. is that you keep listening. Yeah. Anyway, if you could rate and review our podcast. That'd be sweet. You can do that going to ratethispodcast.com slash brotherhood. And you can always find a link to whatever works best for you uh, to listen at our website, brotherhoodwithout.com. Dot-e-com. So we'll let you get back to some Tyrion stuff. What? Deuce. So, Alice is throwing his let away by Braun. Pycel had already diddy bopped on out, probably to run to Cersei and tell her through Everything the door. My happened. queen, I know you're shitting, but yeah, exactly. Uh, but Varys and Littlefinger stayed and saw everything. I and I thought that line was so sick. They saw yeah. everything. Oh, like... <laughs> your antics amuse me so. I grow ever more antics. Oh ah, my suck god! It. I, hate <clears throat> I grow ever more admiring of you, my lord. Vera says you appease the Stark boy with his father's bones and strip your sister of her protection in one swift stroke. You give the Black Brother the men he seeks, rid the city of some hungry mouths, yet make it all seem mocking, so none may say the dwarf fears snarks and grumpkins. Deftly done. Deftly, my lord. So even Varys is now like, oh shit, all oh, right. Wow. Tyrion knows he's a little better at this than Ned Stark was. Yeah. Like, the men in this room really have stand to lose something if they turn against Tyrion, and now he's making player moves. He's doing what Tywin said to fucking do, yeah. which is weed out the, weed fucking... out the bullshit. Mm-hmm. And so... Yeah, Littlefinger, however. Littlefinger, yeah. Happy. He's got a little bitch. I am going. not pleased, Tyrion. I am not pleased, Tyrion. Yeah, he's just pissed. Like, yeah. as he starts going at him, kind of talking shit. Will the, Will your sister allow you yeah. to send her gods away? And he's like, I don't really give a fuck what she thinks. What I say, I'm gonna do. I fucking do. And yeah. he's like, Oh, really? Everything, even the lies. Especially the lies, yo. Like, fuck you. Yeah, Tyrion straight up is like, yo, if you got so- something to say to me, Littlefinger, then say it. And Littlefinger's like, yeah, I think it's just going to be difficult for Missella to marry Robert Aaron when she's down in Dorne marrying fucking Tristane. But, you know, whatevs. No biggie. And he's like, well, how was I to know Dorne would accept when I offered you the, the thing? So, you know, it's eh, not really my fault. And Littlefinger just says, leave me out of your next deception. And Tyrion, glancing at the dagger on his head, yeah. says, only if you do the same for me. And Littlefinger leaves, and Tyrion asks Varys to walk with him. Walk with me, my friend. And so they leave out the back door of the galley, and they're walking. And this is when we learn that Tyrion has been up to even more... <laughs> Because he is uh, has had Bronn searching the dungeons. Now, we know that Bronn was kind of out hunting for cell swords, but I think that there were small hints that he was like, search out specific exceptional people. Yeah. And we learned the four, wh- what they are. A thief, a poisoner, a mummer, and a murderer. And then we learn part most of the reason why. Sounds like why. the start of a, of a riddle. Yeah. So, or a joke. Mm. So, the reason for them is they will be accompanying Ned Stark's bones, along with the Lannister men. Dressed he's as Lannister men. going to dress men. them yeah. as Lannister guards. And then he says, he tells Varys that Varys is going to be the one that's going to convince Cersei that the house guards should go. Yep. By stating that it's actually a cover-up for his secret plan for those two alone. Yep. And that he's got these infiltrators who will sneak in and free Jamie. Yeah. And god damn it, what a fucking sinisterly fucking Yeah, twisted. even Varys is like, "All right, all right. I can sing this song to your sister, I guess." And so then we learn that Sir Cleos had left that after that very afternoon. Meaning with Sir Vilar as well. With Vilar and all the other Lannister guards. Oh, I guess and, he might not be a light, huh? And a, uh, a knight and the four, the four implants that 
Varys, or well, yes. Tyrion has placed in Varys's behalf. And Tyrion finds Timmet and tells him that he wants him to come to his soul lord tonight at midnight. And he, Tyrion uh, eats his dinner yeah. with the Moon Brothers and the Stone Crows that night, and they have a grand old time. He's, well, he uh, asks, he asks yeah. Shaga, "What, what is, the, what would you call the moon tonight?" And Shaga's like, "It is a, a black moon tonight, half man." And Tyrion's like, "Yeah, they call that a traitor's moon." So keep your axe sharp. And I just, I love, I love Tyrion's interactions with. Well, the he wild says men. not just keep your axe sharp, but he also tells him to you know keep keep your eyes open, yeah, and, like keep your shit peeled because shit could happen. And Shaga, yeah, he's like, oh, we always keep our knives sharp, half man, fucker. <laughs> I mean, I assume they just kind of throw in a fucker at the end of everything. And then by midnight. The castle was dark and quiet, and Shaga's boot split the wooden door with a thunderous crack, and Tyrion follows Shaga and Timmet inside. Stepping over the splintered wood, they go through the building into a room where they pull the shades off of a bed, and there's a little woman in there, a little yeah, naked woman. A naked serving girl who recoils from Shaga, and Tyrion tells... Don't hurt me, my lord! Tyrion tells Timmet to see her out, but gently. Yeah, and... Shaga's not pleased because Shaga, I will give her child and she will be Shaga's. And he's like, Shaga, yeah, chill out, Shaga, if she wants a kid put in her, we'll let her know where to find you, okay? Leave her the fuck alone. So Tyrion walks up and drags a thin blanket off the bed, revealing a naked old bitch Pycelle. You motherfucker. And Tyrion asks him if the Citadel approves him betting serving wenches. And Pycelle starts to stammer, what, what is the meaning of this? I, I am your loyal servant. And Tyrion drops the bomb. Drops the bomb. So loyal, you sent one of my letters to Duran, the other you gave to my sister, and... No, 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 I never Varys the spider. I could tell you things about the eunuch. And he's like, drop it. Like, I know. I know things about the eunuch. I don't give a shit about your stories. He didn't do it. Yeah, I, I told Varys that I was giving Tommen to Doran to foster. I told Littlefinger I was giving Marcella to Robert Aaron. You're the only one who fucking knew about... No, well, b- birds can be intercepted and the shot... Sh- sh- I'm fucking speaking out my ass and I have so nothing yeah, to say. Tyrion tells Shaga to cut off his manhood and do feed it. it to the goats. Dude, I kind of forgot a little bit about that part. Like... I, I didn't remember that it was, like, he goes in and he fucking, I mean, he squeals around like a little girl. I mean, that's kind of fucked up because I think most little girls wouldn't actually scream nearly as fucking gross and pathetically as this motherfucking rotten yeah. vile person. So he screams like a fucking coward ass bitch and gets his shit cut off. Yeah. Well, his beard. Yeah. Yeah, not his... I know. Not his manhood. But it's like fun I, to elude. And, uh, yeah, he starts pissing the bed as but he's... But it freaks him out. Like, yeah. he's, like, ready to be fucking... <laughs> and Tyrion asks him, how long have you been spying for my sister? And Pai says, all I did, I did for House Lannister. Your father knows, twas I bid Ares open the gates to Tywin. And that actually takes Tyrion by surprise for a minute. And he's like, so the Sack of King's Landing was your work as well, too, huh? And he be- Tyrion just goes through it. How many have you betrayed, I wonder, Pycelle? Ares, Eddard Stark, me, King Robert as well, Lord Aaron, Prince Rhaegar. Where does it begin, Pycelle? Dude, just he knew list. where it ended. Yeah. Tyrion knows where it ended. And yeah, just the list. How many people did you fuck over? And they start talking about Robert. Yeah, the board did the work for you, but no doubt you would have finished him if it was left half done. And he's like, no, 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 but... Oh, uh, he calls him a wretched king, vain, drunk, and he would have set your sister aside. Renly po- planned on bringing a beauty Marjorie, from Highgarden, yeah. yeah, who looked like Lyanna, to... As we remember from Game of Thrones, yeah. Renly had tried to see from Ned if Marjorie looked anything like Lyanna, and she didn't, but he was trying to sell her off to fucking be closer to Loras, and boot Cersei to the curb. And he says, And Lord Aaron knew he sent his wife to the Eyrie and his son to foster at Dragonstone. He meant to act, but I never poisoned him. I didn't poison him. It wasn't me. Uh... Yeah, he feeds all the bullshit. And... So, yeah, Shaga puts his blade up to his neck and actually draws some blood here. And at the 
the feel of the blood running down his chest. All, he breaks. Yeah, yeah, all the fight goes out of him. And he says, yes, Coleman was purging him, so I sent him away. The queen needed him dead. She couldn't say it, but I could see it in her looks. Though I did not poison him, It was I Sir swear. Hugh, yeah. which Ned had figured out that Sir Hugh was involved somehow. Because that's who, the one who was killed at the tournament um, yep. of... Ned's tournament. It yeah. was Ned's fucking tournament. Yeah, yeah, right? the jousting. Yeah, yeah. And so Tyrion's just disgusted and commands him thrown into a black cell. Off with this bitch. Yeah, fuck you. And so they do. They take him and leave him alone in Pycelle's room. He begins snooping. Yes. Collects a few more small jars and thinks that... Uh, he should have taken Tywin's advice. Well, he thinks he, oh, he yeah, 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 just a little bit, because I just thought he, he needed, uh, he noted that he would yeah, need someone to tend to the ravens. And that he was upset because he wanted Pycelle to be the one he could trust. Yeah, because Littlefinger <clears throat> were no more loyal, just yeah. more subtle and thus more dangerous. Yeah, he knew that Varys and Littlefinger are players and can handle some shit. He was really hoping that stupid Pycelle was just, just stupid, loyal to the the Citadel, like Pycelle doing his duty. No, nope, you're a fucking bitch. Old bitch Pycelle's down and in the And now Varys was aware of the game that was being played, but now Littlefinger is aware that Tyrion's a player. And, yes. And so through this whole thing, it actually ended up being where, yeah, he got the, the informer out, but he also had to kind of reveal himself as a legit player to... Littlefinger yeah. and Varys, who already knew. Yeah, but... And, and so, uh, yeah, yeah, perhaps this, father's method was best. Which was to have Ill and Pain take all three of their heads, mount them on spikes out front of the fucking castle. Which closes out this chapter, yeah. Tyrion 6. Wouldn't that be a pretty sight? What'd you think of the chapter? It's dope. It's a great chapter. It's, it's sweet to actually watch, like, someone like Pycelle get some comeuppance, which it doesn't last long, unfortunately. Right. But... It's still good to see him fucking reduced to this sobbing waste of where even Tyrion's just like, all right, it's not fun to like torture yeah. you. You're just pathetically gross. So yeah, revealing his true nature though, it's good to and it, good to it see. like that poor girl. Yeah. Ugh. So do you have a inductee? An inductee. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was. I guess just Tyrion, like just for. The win he has in this and the downfall he has quickly coming. He's on such a high here where I can see it getting corrupted. But, god damn it. Fuck Pycelle. It's so good Cop at out. the end. Pi- it's so Pycelle, good. hell yeah. Fuck Pycelle. Cop out. Fuck <laughs> you. Who is yours? Um, I was going to just throw it to the serving girl so that we could give her a warm, safe place to sleep it off. But I'm actually going to give it to Bronn. Because... First of all, having to deal with Tyrion's bullshit of you, you were you didn't tell him. <laughs> Why didn't you come to me? And then second, because he grabbed Alistair Thorne by the arm and escorted this motherfucker out of this bitch. Yeah, fuck. Just Thorne. fucking grabbed him and like. Thorne's not a tiny dude. He was the master at arms, yeah. like, up there. And so for Bronn to just grab a hold of him and be like, let's go. You're done. I like the image of Bronn chilling on the stairs of the Iron Throne below Tyrion, too. Just So I didn't posted. mention it during the... When we were talking about it, but when he describes that Sansa was in there watching, he... I, I thought it was almost... He spent a good amount of detail saying she looked exceptionally, like, beautiful this morning. Yeah. Like... And just, I don't know if it was odd or he's just. I think like, he was feeling guilty, knowing that he's got to fuck Rob here. Yeah, and she's yeah. standing there watching him, this innocent little girl who's really just wants to fucking go home, yeah, but is caught true. in all the bullshit. So those are our inductees. Yeah. And we did get an inductee from Julian from France, and so he has this to say. Hi again, an interesting chapter for me to unfold with stuff I didn't quite understand. Poisoning Cersei. Getting rid of her guards? Not sure what is up here. Interesting to learn anyway. So hopefully we kind of helped break that down a little bit for you. But if not, you're on our Facebook. Send us a message. We'll we'll elaborate. Um, his inductee, though, is a dead man. Dead yet important. And quoted a few times throughout this chapter, Robert Baratheon. Mm. The stronger and better one of the family. Whoa! <laughs> who ruined himself with booze and whores. That's too bad. He seems to have been the best of them all during the rebellion. He must have uh, rolled in his grave, contemplating what's happening in the Seven Kingdoms, especially with his two little brothers. Have a good day, boys. Valor de Harris. 
Robert Baratheon. Bobby B. Bobby B. Definitely a good one. Uh, Rising from the Grave. I don't know if I quite agree with the best of them. Stannis is in that cluster of brothers. Well, I mean, yeah, obviously. But Stannis during the, re- the rebellion, he was the elder brother. He was leading the armies, and like he was. Oh he yeah, was, no, he'd be calling yeah. them fools. Fools, right now. I'm for, not pleased, yeah, brothers. He wouldn't be pleased. So thank you, Julian, for writing in as always. Great inductee. If you would like to write in, like Julian did, um, like Sid on our small council. The next chapter we are reading is Aria 6 from Clash of Kings, yeah. followed by Danny 2. So we are almost halfway through this book, if not halfway, and just now getting to Daenerys' second chapter. That's okay. It's good stuff. Yeah. It's very, very good stuff. So if you would like our to send in your inductees, we will definitely read them on that chapters. So hit us up. We'll catch you on the next episode. Bella Daenerys. Peace. Peace.